verse 4 and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child and so it was that while they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered hallelujah thank you father God and when they were there the days were accomplished that she should be delivered father God I thank you Lord. I thank you for your word I thank you for your promises God that all your promises are yes and amen and Lord, I thank you for the day, the hour, and the season that we are in. Lord, I thank you that it is a new day and it is a new season. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would give us ears to hear and eyes to see what you are saying to us in this hour. Lord, that we would not miss you. That, Father, we would set aside our own agendas and our own plans, our own desires and our own wants. That we would set aside our fear and our anxiety, Father, and truly seek after you and what you are doing in this hour and the very perfect will that you have for our lives, Father God. Lord, I thank you that this is a season of crossing. I thank you, God, that this is a season of Lord, that 2016 was a year of goodbye, but 2017 is a year of tremendous hellos. I thank you, God, that this is a season of complete and total deliverance, Lord. But Father, I know by the Spirit, God, that we have to be led by the Spirit, that Lord, you are doing something in the earth, in our nation, in our life, and in the church, Father God, something that we have never seen, Lord God. And Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would give us discernment, God, that you would lead and you would guide us, and God, that you would take a hold and you would take over, God. Lord, to just speak to our hearts, Father God, that we might not miss you in this moment, that we might not be in confusion, Father God, but that we would see and we would hear you without confusion, plain as day, Father God. Lord, I ask you, let this word go forth like seed and let it not return unto you void, but God, let it accomplish that for which is sent. Father, let it lead and guide us, Lord. Let it correct us, Father God. Let it convict us, Father God. Let it inspire us, Father God. Lord, let it encourage us, Father. And I just thank you, Father God, for removing every hindrance, Lord, in this place. And Father, you and you alone know, Lord God, what each of your sons and your daughters are going through tonight. You know what each son and daughter need, Lord God. And Lord, you said, for I know the plans that I have for you. And they are not to harm, but they are to give us a hope and a future, God. And Lord, I thank you that you are a God that is for us. That you are on our side. And I thank you that you dwell within us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, God. And I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But not only shall it not prosper, Father, but every promise, Lord God, you are able to perform, God. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for changed lives, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, for this year that we will declare and decree, I have never seen anything like this. And we just praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And you may be seated. Hallelujah. God is good. I pray that you... Uh, enjoyed your holiday season thank you for praying for my family it was um you know i, I laugh every time that i uh i preach something i get tested in it i love 
But I love that God, um, whenever he gives us tests, he gives us uh, open book tests. Amen. And God will always give us information before we face a test. And as I was preaching the closeout of, of 2016, I, I decreed and I declared that it would be a year of, of goodbyes. And, um, and it was a little bit of a crazy Christmas for us this year. Uh, thank you for praying for Bobby. He came through surgery. Um, I don't know what was the greater miracle that he came through the surgery because it was a hernia that was worse than they thought. Um, I don't know if it was a greater miracle that he came through it or that he actually rested and, and did what his wife told him to do. Uh, there was a lot of threatening and um, yelling, but he, he, he was a good boy. He was a good boy and, and finally went back to work today and he's on light duty. And I said, light duty means no lifting. Just walk and tell people what to do. Can you say amen? So I'm trusting. Uh, I've, I sent him with the angels and told the angels to block his hands. Uh, not only was Bobby recovering and, and mom, you know, she, she's been recovering and doing well, but Kimberly was bitten by a spider. And I think I had said that that Sunday night when I was here and asked you to pray. So thank you for that. She is here. But we were back and forth to the ER about four times to so the doctors. It got, uh, it got infected. Her leg blew up. They had a lancet, um, had to go in there and, and dig all the, the junk out and pack it, then go back to the ER and get it unpacked. Then she broke out and a rash from the top of her head to the soles of her feet literally looked like she had measles like I had never seen. Back to the ER, back to the doctors, found out that she's allergic to uh, sulfur. But praise God, she's here and she's clean in Jesus' name. Amen. So 2016 is a year of goodbye of sickness in the Wolvogel house. Amen. And, uh, and I'm, just, I'm just grateful for God that no matter what you go through, and no matter how crazy it is, that there is a grace and there is a peace. And it is not what you go through, but it is how you go through it and how you um, perceive a thing. And, you know, as, as crazy as it was, because I wouldn't let Bobby lift anything and Kimberly had an open wound, it was, you know, I, I, there was a lot of stuff that I, and I realized how much help I usually have and like half the team, half the team was down, but... You know, I, I began to see it through God's eyes, and I said, you know what? I said, thank you, Jesus, that all this is happening. And we're under the same roof because it was a time that, because everybody was home, um, we all had to sit on the couch and, and truly be together. <laughs> nobody was allowed to run out because nobody could run out. Uh, so we were, we were trapped in the house and truly being um, blessed by each other and there was no you know come on can't you just stay another hour and everybody was home so we really did have a wonderful wonderful time and you know and it was a great time also having the whole house there for you know at least a week to be able to really spend time with with Bob because you know he does work a lot so it really is um, with every situation you can see a blessing in it if you allow yourself to see the blessing where I could have had the attitude of screaming and yelling at everybody being sick and, you know, my Christmas was ruined and all of that. God showed me. It's all how you look at it. It's how you see it. And I've really been, uh, started my fast and started seeking God. And God gave me this series uh, called Not On My Watch. Not On My Watch. And you know, we, the scripture that I read tonight, I have read this scripture, I mean, millions of times. Every Christmas that goes by, everybody hears this scripture. But there was something that jumped off this page that had never jumped off the page at me before, and it, and it shot through my spirit um, like never before. My, 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 my spirit actually like was electrified with it. In the scripture, it says, and the days were accomplished or completed that she should be delivered. God began to speak to me that we should be delivered, that this is a time that we are being delivered 
out of whatever it is you came out of. There's been a lot of stuff that you've been holding on to for one reason or another. But God is saying, the day has come. The years have been completed. And it's funny the way he words it, that she should be delivered. Her, her process was over. The nine months had come and gone, and now was the time that she should be delivered. I want to remind you that back around October and, and, and back at the woman's retreat, God began to speak to me uh, through Ezekiel 12 and 29 when he said that God told Israel that the days of my word being prolonged are no more. That my word and my promises will no longer be prolonged. And I know that in this season, that we are in a new season. God is not getting ready to prepare us for a new season. That has been what we have been doing for the last 10 and 12 years, is preparing for this time and for this season. And when I got this word, it was like a ramer that went through my soul. But as soon as I, I, I got it, the Lord also said to me that this year, 2017, will be a year of miracles. That many times you're going to hear over and over, and it has already begun. I have never seen anything like this. And you yourself are going to say, I have never seen anything like this before. But as I began to rejoice and get all excited about that, I heard the same Holy Spirit in that same soft and familiar voice, like a whisper. It said that this will be a year of much breakthrough. But it is imperative that you stay close and you hold fast. And I'm going to... Um, Read some of this tonight because as I began to pray, God woke me up this morning and I was seeking the Lord and I've begun my fast and really getting before God. Um, he began to download what I'm about to tell you into my spirit and it was coming so fast and so fre like frequent and, and my, my keyboard was just wet with tears because the presence of God was so strong. Um, and I, and I believe that it is, it is a word of encouragement. It is a word of conviction. It is a word of direction, but it is a word that to him who has an ear, let him hear. And I will tell you that your flesh will not receive this. Your flesh is not going to receive this, but if your heart is open and your heart is vulnerable to God, you will be able to receive this word. First thing he said to me was, never think that while God is blessing, that the devil will not attack. And he said this statement in my spirit that I went, wow. And he says, always remember that as a child of God, you do not live on a cruise ship, but you live on a battleship. You do not live on a cruise ship. He never said that anything was going to be easy. He said, you live on a battleship. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. I will tell you by the Spirit of the Lord that the Lord's coming is approaching quickly. And I'll tell you this, that although things seem to be moving in, in, the, in the government, you know, depending on what side you're on, it's moving in a right direction. But do not think that now is the time to back off. You need to keep praying. Because America will never be great until America is holy. This is not a season of tremendous blessing, but also tremendous warfare. 
This is a season where the child of God will take their place and use the authority that they have been given. It is a season where you will need to be led by, by spiritually led so that you do not fall into the traps that the evil one has set for you. Don't think because you're in a good season that this is not a season that the enemy is just going to stand back and say, I guess I got to let go. He has set up traps. And this is why you've got to be spiritually led. You have got to stay close to God so that you can hear the spirit of the Lord. And learn how to shut the devil's mouth. And only have your ears and your eyes open to what God is doing. This is not a sea. This is a season. I'm sorry. This is a season of rest, but not laziness. When I asked what that meant, he said, meaning you will rest in the trusting of God. However, the only way that you can rest is to labor in that rest. Meaning, seeking, praying, worshiping, fasting, studying, and being obedient to the word of God. In your serving, in your giving, in your life, presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. You cannot be lazy and expect the church to do it for you. This is something that you need to be a participator in. This is a season of being militant and vigilant. There is no backing down or backing up. You must be the watchman on the wall for your family, for your church, for your nation. You cannot have an attitude of que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. But you have to have that, that resolve in your spirit that God will have his way in his time. It is imperative that you do not move ahead or race ahead of God, but listen to the Holy Spirit and let him lead and guide you. He said to me that it's a time for you to grow up and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It is time that now there will be no more milk given. God wants you to feast on the meat of his word. I will tell you this, as a baby you need the milk. But if a baby never graduates from milk to meat, they will be malnourished and eventually they will die. You need the meat of the word. God said it's time to grow up, to step up, and be strong. Stop wavering. Stop being afraid of every little thing that happens. But take your place and take your authority. I know many people have said, it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. And that is true to an certain extent. However, I want to tell you, by, you know, coaxing everybody and coding everybody and being careful of everybody's feelings and how you say something is how political correctness has crept in to not only society but to the church that today when an election doesn't go a certain way and people don't get what they want they need therapy dogs and hot cocoa and the same thing has happened in the church because if I say something where the Holy Spirit says it and the soul gets convicted, people get offended and they want to leave. Because today everything is about, I want to feel good and I want to feel safe. Maybe unknowingly you wanted someone to come into agreement with you. But with your lie, you believe so that it makes you feel better about your life and your decisions. Because a lot of times when somebody will not entertain when you talk, when you complain, when you speak death, and somebody shuts it down, don't say it. I'm not going to sit there and feel bad for you. 
Well, that's not godly. Where is your compassion? And the reason that you want somebody to come into agreement is because you want to feel better about how you feel. About your life and about your decision. The Lord says this mindset has crippled you from moving on to the things that God has for you. He said, you may be offended at this, but the truth is you need to be offended. Your truth might make you feel better for a while, but God's absolute truth will heal you forever. I don't care about being politically correct. I can speak the truth in love, but if you're standing in a burning building, I'm not going to try to gently coax you out to make you feel better. Better that you hate me and I can save your life than for you to love me and let me watch you die. I will not tolerate it. And if you truly love people, don't enable them to live below what God has promised. It is time to grow up, step up, and pull people up. Because you will die in your complacency and your little safe zone. The Lord said, do you want to be well, heal, and whole? Or comfortable and stagnant, dying in a slow and numbing death? Remember when Adam fell and, and when Elijah sat under the juniper tree and wanted to give up, God asked the both of them, two great and mighty men of God, he asked them the same question. He said, how did you get here? When God has to ask you, how did you get to a place? It is because you are in a place that God has not led you to. And you got led by the enemy because you listened to a lie. God never ordained you to be in some of the messes that you're in. But thank God for his grace. He'll meet you where you're at and pull you out if you listen. He also said this, and this sounded crazy to me. He said, please understand that every time you crowd out, cried out and said, God, you're killing me. He said, yes, I am. I am killing you because you have to die. You have to decrease so that I might increase in your life. Because until you die, until your desire and your agenda and your control and your anxiety and all your phobias and fears and whatever it is, until it dies and until you give me complete, total control, you are going to be stagnant and comfortable while the spirit of Python just goes around you nice and easy and slow and begins to squeeze the very life out of you. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. Like I said, it was quite a time in my prayer closet today. He said to me, there's no other way. He said, in this season, you must lie down and die. Unless a seed falls into the ground and dies. It cannot live. He reminded me that I've been preaching February will be 12 years. Twelve is the number of order. It is the number of government. God is here, and now the shift has taken place. See, for the last 11 years, I've been praying, I've been preaching and teaching about process, about embracing the process. But God said, you know the truth. You've been taught enough. You've been given the information. You know enough the difference between the lie and the truth. You know the difference 
between truth that is relative and absolute truth. God is here and now, and the shift has happened. And if you allow God and surrender, he will bring order out of your chaos. He said, in this season, you can no longer be a spectator, gleaning and receiving. But you must be an active partner with God in the plan that he has for your life. There is no quick fix. You want revelation? You want God to use you? You want to walk in the power? You want to walk in the anointing? Well, then you need to pray. You need to fast. You need to see God. You need to worship. And everything that happens in church should be an enhancement to what is going on with you privately. And there are no excuses. Don't tell me I can't read the Bible. Don't tell me I don't have time. Don't tell me. Because you can make all the excuses. But God is saying, this is a year of miracles. You need to get out of your flow and get into my flow. I will tell you that not everybody will receive this word. Because people are used to being spoon fed. It's sad, but it's true. There are people that want a relationship with God's blessings but don't want to do the work to have a relationship with God. This is a season and a time where the men are separated from the boys, the girls from the women, the wheat from the tares. Receive it or don't. But this is what God is saying. He says, no one can do this for you. No one can give this to you. This is between you and your God. You can't depend on people. It doesn't mean that the people are bad, but if you think, well, if my friend is with me, if my husband's with me, then I'm going to be okay. You've got to have the attitude and the resolve that if God is for me, then no one and nothing can be against me. All the idols in your life, destroy them yourself before God has to destroy them. God, and this, this is something that he said, he says, I am God alone and I will not and I refuse to share the throne of your heart with anybody or anything. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and you shall have no other God beside me. He wants relationship, and you and I need to choose this day to whom you will choose to serve. Because you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve fear and anxiety. You cannot serve anything that you put above God. It is time to die to yourself. He said, how long will you stand between two opinions? Either God is God or he's not God at all. Stand up, step forth, and tap into the power of the Holy Spirit that already dwells within you. Stand up, step forth, Tap in to the Holy Spirit that is already dwelling in you. For the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, He dwells in you. You don't have to ask Him to come in. 
the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit took up residence. Know ye not, ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, you are seeking and you are asking for something that has already been given. He said, start tapping and start stirring. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What does that mean, start stirring and tapping? 2 Timothy 1, 6-7, it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. The truth is that people will only stay close or hold fast when things are going well. I'm with you, God, as long as everything is going my way. I got that job. I got that man, got that woman, got that house. I'm holding on. But all of a sudden, when the boat begins to rock, people start running. Fear comes from the Greek word dalia. It literally means timidity or cowardice. If you study the letters that Paul wrote to the different men, when he was writing to Timothy, you'll find out that Timothy was battling and suffering from low self-esteem. He tells Timothy, you've got to stir up that gift inside of you. The word stir up, it comes from the Greek word anazoporeo, which means keep a full flame. See, Timothy thought that he wasn't as good as Paul. He wasn't as good as Peter. There are some people here tonight and say, well, I'm not as strong as you, or I'm not as strong as her or him. See, and Paul had to remind Timothy, Timothy, God's put a gift in you. He says, I knew your mama. I knew your grandmother. I knew what was in them. I saw it. I felt it. And that same thing that's in them, it's in you. But you've got to start stirring it up and tapping into it. There's a spirit of intimidation, which is the spirit of Jezebel. And she is rearing her head in this generation like we have never seen it before and it is a spirit that wants to intimidate you wants to paralyze you wants you to live in fear and people intimidated believers lose their authority by default because when you're intimidated by the enemy you hand over your authority to him and the reason that you get tim intimidated is because you don't know who you are. And you don't believe the power that is within you. I've always told you that when you don't know who you are and whose you are, you don't know what you have. So you accept things that God has never intended. You get led into places where God has not led you. But you've gone there by your own choice. See, the gift is present in you. But it's not an operation. Which makes you think that you are void or barren of something that you already possess. God kept stressing to me. Tell them to stop asking and start tapping. God doesn't have to create more of a Holy Spirit. He said, it's better that I go so that the Holy Spirit will come 
And it's better that he comes. Why? Because I physically can't live inside of you. But the Holy Spirit, he comes and he makes his dwelling place. Your spirit. Your spirit now because the Holy Spirit is in you, is alive and can communicate with God. But when you continue to allow the enemy's voice to talk to you and to lie to you, why is it that we so accept a lie and receive it and own it, but we can't own the truth that was already purchased for us? See, don't you understand you mean nothing to the devil? That he wants to own you and to control you, but he never purchased you. He wouldn't do anything. He wouldn't sacrifice anything of himself. But you are so loved of God that God purchased you with the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. When you value something, you keep it, you use it, you tap into it. The gift is in you. The faith is in you. You have to tap into it. You have to stir it up. You've got to keep the flame full. When you yield and you and you and you yield yourself to fear and anxiety and doubt, your flame it flickers. It flickers. God says you're the keeper of the flame. When you submit to intimidation, you are not in the authority of God. God has a place for you. God has a place for each and every one of us. And in that place, there comes an authority that goes with that place. Until you find that place, you will be restless and uncomfortable because you're not walking in the authority that God has given you in your life. It's important that to at all times, no matter what you're facing, to stir up the gift to stir up the spirit. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. We keep that full flame. That no matter what I see, no matter what I hear. And don't think now because it's a new season, it's a new day. That you don't have to fight. That things aren't going to happen. They're going to happen. And if you misunderstood me, I'm making myself very clear to you. Heading in the right direction. But there are things that need to be taken care of. There's some strong decisions that need to be made. In our nation. In our lives. In our homes. In our churches. This is a time where God has said, listen, you're not on a cruise ship, you're on a battleship. So put your armor on. Be vigilant. Being sober. Militant, vigilant. I'm going to persevere, but I'm going to be militant about this. I'm going to walk in step. We must be the watchman on the wall. Because there is an enemy who is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If you remember, the spirit is within you, which means the anointing is in you. The anointing. Remember, it is the, when the anointing comes on you, that anointing can destroy the yokes and the bondages. The gift is already in you, which means you are already equipped to fight whatever comes at you. Yeah. So you know what? Sometimes you got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But my God, don't stop in the middle of it. 
Sometimes your grace under fire, but grace is still there. Grace will still carry you through. You're already equipped to kill and destroy that weapon that was formed against you. See, sometimes I think we miss it because we think about God's protection and God's blessing and we think that everything in life is going to be easy. It's only easy when you trust in him. Because when we understand that when we go before a battle and something comes at us, that God has already gone before us. That God is behind us and he's hedged us in. And I have the authority that when I speak, I call things that are not as though they were. Why? Because they already are in the spirit realm. So I need to tap in to the spirit realm. If you know who you are, and you know whose you are, you will not be destroyed. He's gone before you. He's already called you. But whose report will you believe? I encourage you to come out this month and hear this teaching. Because I tell you, God is speaking. I've got the next three weeks all lined up. It's an exciting time. It's an awesome time to be a child of God. Listen, there's going to be opposition. You, do you really think that as God is blessing you, are, are you insane to think that the enemy is just going to back off? He's going to, listen, the enemy is going to come at you. I got the devil so mad at me. But I saw in the spirit. And listen, there's always that knee-jerk reaction. But here's the thing. Have a knee-jerk reaction, but stand strong. I mean, listen, if, if I was to walk up to anybody, if I was to just take this mic and walk up to Vinny and slap him in the face, he would be startled. He wouldn't, you know, he, whoa, 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 what's going on? But you'd see him. You did that once. Don't ever do that again. He's Italian, I know that. He'd never hit a woman, though. But I'd get the look. <laughs> you got to know who you are in this season. I'm not yelling at you, and God's not yelling at you, but He is warning you. Okay? God is warning you. In this season, this is not a time to think because, you know, in the government, more than ever, I believe that we've got some real good God-fearing folk. But they are not God. And it's up to God's people to be vigilant and militant. And I heard him say it like this. Stay close. Stay close. Press in like you've never pressed in. Be bold like you've never been bold before. Tap into that thing. Listen, the Bible says that within these earthen vessels, there is treasure. If, if I told you that there was treasure at the bottom of the ocean, that there was a billion dollars there, and all you had to do was dive in, Listen, I don't care how afraid of water you are. You'd find some way, somehow. You, and if you couldn't, do, you, you, you'd tell somebody else, you know, help me. 
You've got to tap into that treasure. And know that you're going to be tested in this word. Because, you know, here I'm preaching, 2016 is a year of goodbyes. And, and think, you know, well, what am I exactly now? What am I saying hello to in 2017? What am I saying hello to? And I was specific. Lord, we're going to say hello to great and mighty things. To great and mighty things. It's time to speak life. It's time to shut the negativity, not just down, shut it off. Cut it off. Get rid of it. Don't entertain fear. Don't entertain anxiety. Some have more of an intimate relationship with fear and anxiety than you do with mercy and grace. I got a word coming in a few weeks. Stop sleeping with the enemy. Okay? Because literally, intimate, it's like fornicating with fear. And you're giving birth to something that God has not impregnated you with. Because the spirit of fear, he clearly says... That does not come from God. And Jesus said, stay away from the very appearance of evil. In this season, you are going to have to hear God. And if you cannot hear it, you've just got to go with what he said. It's blind trust. It's blind faith. But choose you this day. Who will you serve? And how long will you be between two opinions? This is going to be an awesome season. You're going to see God pull you out of stuff, do stuff for you, turn things around. It's going to blow your mind. But you got to tap into it. Amen? Amen. I tell you, it was, it was pretty fierce. That was mild. How I delivered that, that was very mild compared to what I was getting in my spirit. I had, I, had a, I had a real heavy time with the Lord today. But I'm so encouraged. And I'm so excited for what God is about to do. And I'm telling you, God is as big as you'll make him in your life. God's not holding himself back from you. He says, here I am. Take me. Go after me. Run after me this year like you've never run after him before.